Today, Dukoscopy TV talks to Andris Vilks, the Republic of Latvia's Minister of Finance. The multi-annual financial framework is a seven-year plan that controls the yearly EU budget. So, as of 1st January 2014, each member state of the European Union begins implementing the set guidelines. So, where are the majority of funds being allocated? What are the anticipated benefits? And what happens if some countries are found to not be meeting the fixed objectives? Minister Wilkes, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure to be talking to you. You're welcome. Now, the topic that we would like to discuss today is the multi-annual financial framework being critical financial guidelines for the EU to carry out effective common policies over a longer period of time. Now, the framework um, outlines itself as an expression of political priorities. And obviously, one of the biggest priorities at the moment in Europe is jobs, which the framework has addressed by putting a lot of focus in this sector. Can you explain a bit about what, what the money will be allocated to try and create new jobs, especially here in Latvia? There's no doubt about it. It's a very important issue is for Latvia, not just for Latvia, for all of the EU countries at this moment, how to create jobs in which industries and how to get the mo most effective way. Not out from the crisis, but let's say from this so-called stagnation or very low growth um, environment. And in Latvia, indeed, it's an important issue because we are going to allocate 4.4 billion of euros from European cohesion uh, policy funds and it's first time when we are going to stick that together with our own policy so-called national development plan for 1420 and there's a lot about job creation about the different industries how to stick together research and development and the business that was one of the weakest points in Latvia and it's no doubt it could be also some kind of struggling point in many of the EU countries and you know, also theory to put together with practice also about this um, excess for example in, in our case there is a lot of um, issues as regards to the accessibility let's say that um, entrepreneurs in the rural areas in the countryside should be more uh, given options to get to the information or uh, also to improve the situation with employment, let's say to attract employment. And uh, that is very important, the so-called uh, access to the broadband internet, which is very important. And overall, our um, one of the most important issues is how to improve, uh, let's say, mobility of labor force. Uh, let's say that's very important. That is uh, also not just um, support to the entrepreneurs but also infrastructure if you have um, quite a well-developed infrastructure and a lot of op options for commuters it's, uh, it's also a very important thing which is uh, going to increase capacity of your economy can we focus a little bit on small and medium-sized enterprises because in europe more than 20 million of sme represent 99 percent of all businesses and are a key driver for economic growth employment as well as social integration and innovation. And Germany perhaps could be the best model in terms of developing its SME sector that has shown great resilience throughout the crisis since 2008. In fact, it even grew during the years of recession and amongst all other things, created an additional net of 1.4 million jobs. So considering the importance of the sector, how many funds will Latvia allocate in order to increase the competitiveness of SME and should it put a stronger focus on this particular area? Also in Latvia, SMEs are playing a crucial role. It's also delivering more than 90% of GDP. And it was also quite important to mention during the quite uh, deep recent crisis, a lot of SMEs were able to survive. And uh, seems to be that is very important area where we need to expand with support on different programs. And also from our side, we are going to locate more than 13% of uh, European Regional Development Fund for the coming years. And what we are doing at this moment, again, we are trying to shift from previous uh, so-called generic approach, to the tailor-made support for SMEs. That is uh, not just um, we are going to provide, um, let's say, some kind of funding for, 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 the, for the growth of SMEs, but that is very much up to the clustering issues, uh, consulting issues and um, enhancing human resources. Overall in Latvia, that is um, one of the key reforms ongoing at this moment, education, all levels. And it's definitely it's very important for SMEs as well. Access to financing, we are trying to find another resources because commercial banks are quite uh, cautious still and we need to get another approach. Uh, let's say capital market development is very important. 
and everything which is connected, how we are able to expand to the external markets. Just again, consulting and providing some some more ad additional information how to go out from Latvia, because no doubt about that, being small economy, there is uh, <clears throat> increasing export uh, as a share of GDP, and that's what, what we need. Overall, I can say, I can sum up uh, that is something like smart specialization strategy. Small countries can go in this direction. Okay, now youth unemployment is another big issue that's being addressed. Additionally, there's a lot of attention being paid to getting young people to study abroad. What are the potential benefits of this? Are there any particular areas in Europe that are being targeted and what will Latvia see from this? Uh, youth unemployment is um, shrinking um, trouble in Latvia. It was, during the crisis, even very close to 30%. Overall, but at this moment, un youth unemployment is something around uh, 20 percent and going down. So to say, but uh, and also I, I would like to mention that we were able to de decrease youth unemployment last year by 15 percent. So that definitely we are uh, g getting a post result. But it's again up to the up to the quality of education, and therefore uh, we have we have to start in early in early stage, just providing as as good as possible vocational training, so called apprenticeship practice, and we are trying to study the best experience, uh, f let's say from the Germany or Austria, where is a very uniquely unique low uh, youth unemployment. That is uh, very much up to the education. Also, we are going to spend uh, also quite a lot of uh, some of the money for that. And uh, definitely uh, there is a very important issue is how to help with the first uh, job. Let's say there should be some kind of support entrepreneurs as well for those which are taking those youngsters uh, for their first uh, uh, job place. And that is up to the action uh, approach. And uh, of course, education and different uh, studies, uh, option studies to study abroad is also very important for us because the small mobility of our students seem to be just is going to increase and we are very open. Being small nation, we are quite open to that, those challenges. But what we would like to stick uh, from very, very early stage is this, um, all the, the positive developments which are coming from our structural forms education, which should uh, benefit later on to the, to the more prepared uh, youngsters to the real life. Okay, now we've talked about some of the areas that will be targeted with the multi-annual financial framework. And in fact, it is the European Commission that came up with the Euro budget 2014-2020 that is aimed at achieving strategy Europe 2020 objectives. Now, the Commission will review the success of the financial framework in two years, in 2016, taking into account the economic situation at that time, as well as the latest microeconomic projections. Now, how will the multi the annual financial framework be altered in case some of the objectives are not being met? This is, of course, a very sensitive <laughs> uh, subject to discuss, but uh, nevertheless, I think at this moment, the um, European Commission uh, and then the particularly also all the members that are trying to focus on the issues where they are struggling or they would like to get some kind of different development. Let's see how it would be later on, but uh, I think it's very important is that Almost all, actually all the, uh, all the EU member states has their own specific country recommendations, also we have. It's mainly related to the different reforms and requirements. I think that is a very important driver. It's anyway up to the countries. Uh, some would succeed, some would follow those recommendations, some will somehow postpone, some will be let, uh, slower. It's difficult to say, it could be a very different, uh, di different mixture. It's very much up to the overall situation in, in Europe. That's from one side and from other side uh, situation in different member state countries and let's see how it would be later on but i think um, there is no doubt about uh, necessity for structural reforms because overall um, europe is struggling and losing its competitiveness to the global players uh, and that is uh, very much up to all of us it's no doubt that in two years there would be a number of countries which will succeed in that. As I hope the Latvian Baltic states will be uh, some of those frontrunners because we are coming out from the crisis reforms. But in some countries there would be resistance and traditions and so on and let's see how it would be. But it's very much that all would be able to act properly at the same time. In our case in Latvia, 
particularly sensitive issue is how to diminish uh, those um, discrepancies among the different regions and so on. I think overall in Europe it's the same problem. And there we need to deliver a lot of different programs. It's not an easy task, you know. EU funds are quite important. Our national, uh, let's say, different investment pro programs are quite important. But that is uh, a challenging uh, task, especially seeing um, increasing mobility of our people, which are easy, just leaving regions to the cities or leaving country to other countries. We have to be all very responsible, following all those country-specific recommendations, which is bringing together this uh, effect later on. Okay, and the final topic that we wanted to discuss is the fact that various EU countries during the past years have been put under the spotlight in terms of misusing EU resources, like Italy with funding music concerts and Greece having to repay almost 260 million euros in misused farm payments. So considering the moral practices in other countries, what measures are in place here in Latvia to prevent any misuse of EU funds? In our case, we are quite uh, happy saying that we have the lowest e level of error in the EU. So we are the best. Then, nevertheless, still there are still a lot of areas we would like to improve the situation. We have to be very honest to ourselves, to the donor countries, how we are using this money. The very important is that we are uh, honestly are explaining how we are going to spend. We are making different revisions, ex ante procurement verifications and uh, checking uh, all those projects in places and so on. And at the same time, we are inviting all the institutions and just uh, taking, uh, to take part in those, those events. And uh, at, at this moment, I think the best is that we have system, which is uh, several pillars and which are controlling. And uh, at the same time, we are, going, we are trying to be more efficient also in bureaucracy, not increasing bureaucracy, but let's say um, merging different uh, institutions which are taking uh, control over that. In our case, we've got support from the European uh, Commission side and it uh, seems to be that we would be able to serve also as a good example for cooperation among the EU institutions and, and among our institutions as well. And very important is to provide honest and, and um, uh, reputable information to the, our society and the European Commission. I think there is uh, still a lot to do, but again, um, the European Commission can follow different practices in different countries. And I hope at this moment after those very uh, painful, um, let's say, facts, how the money was misused in many of the countries, I think at this moment uh, there is increasing pressure from donor countries, the countries which are paying to others, and uh, that uh, especially after the crisis in the Europe, uh, that we should be more efficient, how we are going to use, and we should concentrate our efforts to areas we the, we need the money the most. I think the situation will improve for next period. It's no doubt about that. Yeah, because we we uh, so we got the quite a very valuable uh, experience. I, I cannot see that uh, any of the countries could repeat previous mistakes. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Minister Wilkes. It was a pleasure talking. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Well, that was Andreas Wilkes, the Republic of Latvia's Minister of Finance who shared the potential advantages of the multi-annual financial framework for Latvia. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Dukes Copy TV.